Hi, I'm Natalie with Tat Your Own Adventure. Thank you for joining me again in this beginner series. We've gone over chains and picos and rings and picos. And now we're going to look at joining. Okay, so I've taken my work from last the last video, which was the rings, and I'm just going to reverse my work. So now the rings are being held upside down in my hand. And I'm going to take my other color, my teal here, and I'm going to use that for my ring. I'll show you a ring on a join first. Okay, and I'm gonna make a ring with the teal. So I wrapped it around my hand, like we did in our last video with rings. And I'm gonna work a couple stitches. So I'm gonna put in one, two, check to see if my ring still opens and closes. That's good practice, good habit. It's nicer to only have to do undo one or two stitches instead of undoing an entire ring. So I check every once in a while. Three, four, five. And now I want to join to this pico right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, um, there, there are a couple different ways. You can use your crochet hook, or sorry, your you can use your shuttle if it's got a pick or a crochet hook. Um, I'm gonna come up through the bottom of this pico. I'm gonna wrap around that thread and pull it through. Okay, so if you're using your pick, that's how you do it. If you're using a crochet hook, all you have to do is send your crochet hook up through the pico, grab that thread, bring that thread back down through. Okay? So whatever joining tool you choose, as long as it can get the thread through the pico for you, it's just fine. Um, I want to make sure this doesn't twist on me. So right now you see that it's coming straight from this part, wrapping around my finger and going back out. So it's not twisted. That's great. I want to send my shuttle through that loop, and then I'm going to tighten that down and then I'm going to complete the second half of the stitch and that finishes off my join right there and that's my first stitch as I move forward so I'm going to do five more stitches and then I'm going to close or five total stitches so two four more so that was one two three four and here's my fifth stitch so I have five stitches my join five stitches and I'm going to close that ring. Okay, so that is how you join to a pico. And I'm going to work a chain here. I work the chain in purple. One, two, three, and there's five stitches there. And then I'm going to join to this pico that's at the top of this ring here. Come up through, grab my thread, pull it back down, make sure it doesn't twist grab my shuttle that I've been working the chain with, which I've been working it with the teal, slide that through, pull it up snug, sorry my shuttle, tensioning shuttle got loose, pull it up snug, then finish it with the second half here. There's the first of my next set of stitches. So that is your regular join. I'm going to do a couple more stitches and then I'm going to show you how to do a lock join, um, also called a shuttle join. And that's done with the shuttle thread, so in this case my teal thread, instead of the thread that we're actually coloring the chain, which is the purple for this one. Let me do two more stitches here. Again, it's practice thread. You don't have to match my counts exactly. Um, just practice the skills until you get them. Okay, for a lock join, I'm gonna come down through my pico that I wanna join to. I'm gonna grab my shuttle thread. Instead of the thread that's on my hand, I'm gonna pull that up. I'm then going to make sure it's not twisted. 
send my shuttle up through that loop. Make sure I've got it tugged so that it's right up next to where I'm joining and then tug that down. It's, this is going to make a knot around that pico. So it's harder to undo because you actually have to untie that little knot that you just made. So you always want to make sure that you've got everything in place, everything tensioned the way you want before you do lock joints. And then I can continue on with my chain. Okay. So lock join or shuttle join is done like so. So you can see we're starting to form shapes here now with our practice piece. We're no longer just throwing rings off of a line. We've now joined in different places and we've got some shape coming into our pattern. And this is how we end up making the different designs um, in tatting. Uh, most, most patterns um, only use these basics. There are advanced techniques that various tatters have added in that can then be added for other other effects in tatting but um, a lot of the antique patterns um, use just those basics for everything that got tatted so you can make a ton of different patterns knowing just these basics um, and then as you're more comfortable with them and if you want to try and challenge yourself to learn advanced techniques you can or you can continue to make beautiful things with just the basics and still be a fabulous tatter. So it is up to you where you go from here. I hope you keep practicing. I hope you try different patterns. I would love to see what you end up doing. So thank you for joining me on the basics of tatting. I look forward to seeing you in other videos.